The word of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful forever. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkanu, to the highest, the only righteous Lord of a God. The true Lord of a God who deals with us in light to make manifest the things pertaining to a glanco process of right reproval and getting their mind to understand with conviction upon the terms of the offender. Such great Lord of a God is calling us to walk in his paths of righteousness and in truth. He is making known well aware for us to put upon the new cloths. He is demanding for us to understand that the new heavens and the new earth consist only of his righteousness. So to such great Lord of a God be the glory to the highest because in his decayest we need truth of righteousness. He has made every believer who believes upon him, those who call upon his name, justified by faith, by grace, certainly enjoy this righteousness. To such great Lord our God who has worked for us through his only begotten Son being made manifested for us in the flesh, justified on behalf of us, to reach the sense box of his glory. Making every believer to understand how to get back to their senses. The saving grace of the Lord of a God, only he alone can endure and work for it. We don't work, we don't earn, we don't deserve. But it is Lord God alone who has worked for it. And to that great Lord of God be the greatest glory to the highest. And peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk in the cherishing and nourishing mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. For we are being called to be the children of light. As we have been continuing our discourse on the Ephesians chapter 5, from verse number 1, to be the Tekna beloved imitators of God the Father in heaven, in love, laying our lives as a living sacrifice to Christ, as a sweet smelling savour. Realizing that his delight is in the word of the Lord of our God and nothing else than that. Realizing to understand to such great glory wherewith you and I have been called. He demands in us to walk in the highway of holiness, breath by breath. As Peter writes for us, As he is holy, so we need to be holy. And yet we have the old sin nature in us constantly pumping up whenever we sin either by thought, word or deed. Therefore we have been mandated to learn to use the privacy of your priesthood. To understand the privacy of your priesthood given to you by the confession of your sins because it is an imperative mode of command to be constantly be controlled of the Spirit. Without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, neither we can understand the things of the mind of Christ. 
but rather in return you are using them for your own destruction, says the scripture, because you will not become the disciple to the Lord. Neither you will become to grow up to be constantly stenos, by that we mean stabilized, established. And as you get out from the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you end up in all rituals rather than reality. Rituals, the great cults, the great Christendom activities, the great so-called false pastor teachers, who end up becoming kleptes, lestes, mistotes, tupas, canapes, tiflos, and shuras oriented minded pastors. A form of godliness, but not able to understand the inner burden of the ministry for which they have been chosen. And since they don't seek the righteousness of Yahweh Elohim and His will, certainly they are not been sent by the Lord of a God. To them their God is belly. To them the word of the Lord of a God is for an instrument to make money for some pieces of bread, half or some handful of barley. To them life seems only to blaspheme my Lord's word. In the midst of such hypocritical oriented masked men, in the midst of such false pastor teachers, yet Lord of a God remembers you if you are having a right and true fellowship with him. When you crave for such fellowship, the groanings which you cannot utter, says the scriptures. The groanings on behalf of you, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, diligently seeking you and searching you and knowing you. That are you really interested in the mind of Christ? Are you just like a man who follow for food? Our Lord, our God, reprimands in John 6, you followed me because of the food that I gave. And such are the men today, not able to realize how important it is in this great and unique dispensation of this unique church age in this entire human history. Lord our God given for us every perfect gift from the heaven to enjoy these ultimate privileges given to this church age believers. The completed canon of the scripture, what we have in our hands. Above all, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit upon every believer's life. And above all, sealed by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Kept as an earnest deposit, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Baptized into one royal family of God by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12.13 a believer is no shot to raise his alibis or ignorance at, or pleading his ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ. The sooner the better it is for him to wake up to this reality. That nothing is laid, absolutely covered before his eyes, but everything is naked, says the scripture. Therefore, let us live off the works of the deeds of darkness. The deeds of those things for us even to speak, it's a shame, says the scripture. But rather, reproving them, a blanco, with a conviction in the mind of the offender. Because everything that makes manifest and it means to say to exhibit the act of divine revolution the act of divine revolution is apocalypto to exhibit to make known to make visible to show and to publicize it as Ephesians 3 3 and 3 5 teaches for us as well as in Ephesians 5 13 
exhibit this mystery doctrine of the church age. Make it be known to every believer in Christ because it's their privilege. It's the privilege, the blessings of the heavenlies given to them prior to the time they could spend on this earth thinking they are not being chosen at all in Christ. Such great, right and true, perfect blessings has been given for us now in the terms of Apocalypto being made known. The act of divine revolution being made manifested for us. And in order to understand that, every believer must be sure in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the divine mentors, the unique and permanent mentors, the human mentors are called to come in one mind, in one spirit, though they are not unique. But every believer is unique in his style of his calling to witness this truth. But all witness only one truth in spite of all the denominations what they make by their errors in their thinking. Bible doctrine is subjected to one interpretation. And to use the word interpretation in the terms of dispensations. Interpretation to understand about the rapture of the church, not using their great metastatic Gnosticism and rising all the Ethiopian thoughts that we are already into the post millennium and some in the amillennium. Besides that, not only a point of the future eschatological events, the people are worried. They in fact indeed do not know. By faith alone, in Christ alone, they have been justified and they have been saved forever. They forget the sainthood. Therefore, Colossians 126 writes, Among the saints we talk and teach about this mystery being revealed for us. And you believe it or not, every believer is a saint in Christ. Every believer has been a Hagia, set apart, a holy one. He has been called out through the church. And every believer has been made to such kind of a great extent that he has been made superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan at the moment of his positional sanctification. People have errors in millennialism. People have errors in their salvation. People have errors to understand how this we, the useless and worthless people, are being joined to one royal family of God at the moment of salvation, in spite of all, not being the Jews, but chosen one as Gentiles. Dear brethren, to make known, to make visible, and the word phonerati demands on the part of every bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God dispensationally. Enjoying this gift for the sake of your belly, as such many people practice it, but not able to understand the right gift of the pastor teacher is to constantly study the word of the Lord of our God and rightly divide the mind of Christ and preach the truth according to the terms of dispensations. Has made many believers, in fact indeed, the so-called nominal believers. Adhering to such and such doctors, and telling, this is right, this is enough for us, weekly ones we shall attend. We are not interested in the theology, we are not interested in the exegesis of the word, isagogics of the word, categories of the word. And in return they are saying, we don't want to carry the burden of Christ. To make his church on this earth as a sound-minded one, a sound health and rightly dividing the word of the Lord our God in order to realize the truth in Christ. And such sound mind of thinking, and such sound mind of realization in Christ, 
is been not the work of only the pastor teacher but every believer who comes to carry this cross every day Christ our Lord our God began his classes every day in the garden of eden through adam and eve proverbs 8:34 he writes day by day and in the hebrew of our hebraic thought it says yesterday today tomorrow the same thing what he tells in hebrews 13:8 jesus christ our lord our god is the same yesterday today and forever and there also we realize the importance of day by day learning this great privilege given to us in this church age and in fact indeed apostle paul wherever he went minimum time 3 months maximum time 3 years at every place making them disciples at every place teaching them the right word of the lord of a god at every place making them to understand the burden of the lord which has been placed upon their shoulders and since that time we don't find the completion can of scripture before ad 70 much placing emphasis upon the work of the jews to believe in christ yet coming to be the apostle of gentiles and teaching to us the importance of this mystery doctrine of the church and making us to understand our calling in Christ and calling us to understand that we are positionally superior than to the chief fallen angel known as satan at the moment of salvation you know positional sanctification in Christ dwelling in our heart mind and soul to realize what a great privilege it is for us to believe such a great lord to make our life in the terms of that great lord to understand for us in the life of the terms of the mind of Christ and to put on Christ and when we read Romans 14:17 to put on Christ the first example we look upon Job chapter 24 furthermore we come to look in Ephesians 4:24 the new clause And in Galatians 4:19 we read more for of Christ being conformed to his image. And ending up in Ephesians 4:13 that we are no longer babes but a mature one in Christ. Isn't it a great privilege for us that we have to enjoy? And how the church age tells breath by breath. in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to consider word upon word line upon line and precept upon precept the sole reason for which we have to do that is the work of ephesians 5:13 teaching to us whatsoever that makes manifest is light whatsoever that gets into the point of right thinking is light and for whom this revolution has been made known and that's the thing what apostle paul intends in for no right to emphasizing the work of the pastor teacher once again to make these things visible public understand to the to this church congregation in christ the universal church and for that reason he says it is the word of the lord of a god the fruit of the light of the spirit which is in all goodness which is in all righteousness and which is in all truth that alone will make it manifest in light and there is nothing else on this earth that you can think that will make manifest for you what is your true calling in the lord therefore we demand every believer to be in the spiritual iq of the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit every believer has been mandated not to lose the time but rather in return purchase the time in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit 
and season your words with the grace of the Christ, her salt. So that anyone can hear, can hear salvation. Anyone can know, he can know the divine laws, the divine standards of Yahweh Elohim through you. When you walk the holy manner walk of life. So that the people can know you are a walking Bible. So that Lord of God could rejoice on your path to tell. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Because you are standing in the gap. You have not been tempered with untempered mortar. Neither you are building a home upon sand. How many days more you want to construct your home in sand, as if the dream what we read in Isaiah chapter 29 to teach. As a man dreams that he is eating the food and he wakes up, he is still, th he is still hunger. As a man drinks or water in his dream and thinks his thirst has been cleared, when he wakes up, it is still a thirst. So are many Christians today. So are many pastor teachers who have left the right work of the bona fide gift. Not even able to realize what a burden it is for us to train up to get to light every thought into captivity for the word of the Lord of a God. Every word to be brought in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to our conscience. As Paul tells in 1 Corinthians 4. A conscious towards God and towards men being absolutely clear. Are we speaking in truth in love towards our congregation? Are we able to discern them what is the right Hebrew, Greek and Aramic word? Why you want to eat long enough or why you want to eat long enough or desire enough that you want to spend your time in the terms of your translations, in the terms of your commentaries, in the terms of your share arts of oratories, in the terms of your oil business, in the terms of your kerchief business, in the terms of deceiving the men by telling such and such lies. Dear brethren, you may cheat now. You may think the local church is nothing for me because they are under my influence. But you are deceiving the flock of the Lord of God. You are answerable to Christ, not to this man. The much time you spend in lies, thinking that is truth, the much irreparable damage you are doing to the church. And that lot, that credit belongs to you as a false teacher. Even for false teachers, a second picture, Christ our Lord of our God, taken their sins on the cross. By that we mean traitors who grieve and squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. By that we mean these are the men who have a form of godliness, but no real inner power of the driven spirit of the Lord of our God, breath by breath, to do His will. But we have been told in Ephesians 5.13, all things that are reproved, the first one, Aglanco, being exposed. Since they could be exposed under the light, they could be manifested only through the light. So Satan blinds your eyes not to look the true light. Satan never gives you time to give number one priority for the word of the Lord of our God, the tithe of your time every day, two hours, 40 minutes. Or whichever way you may go, calculating accurately six minutes an hour and coming for two hours, 24 minutes, rather than two hours or 40 minutes. That's all left to you, whatever one you can think. But it's the tithe of your time that you want to give to the Lord every day, every day, every day. That time doesn't belong to you. And for that reason, the Lord of God has appointed those bona fide gifted men, spiritual pastor, teachers who come to teach to you day by day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Day by day. That's the Bible teaches for us. 
Bible doesn't know what is the Sunday teaching. Long back, Christ our Lord our God in the Garden of Eden began to teach day by day. Supported by Proverbs 34 to tell before the foundation of the world the right pattern is to be the day by day the delight of the Lord our God. To stand at his doorposts, to listen, shema, and absolutely guard it. What you listen, being alert. and to guard it. But many people don't understand what it is to guard the right word of the Lord of a God. They just think Christianity is also one among the religions in my country, India. As poise and as true the religion heads are, so we shall peripeta oh, in Christ in those terms. Wearing white clothes, but inside dead man bones smelling with all the evil deeds of darkness, having greatest mental attitude sins, proving to tell such and such, I have constructed a church with such and so many crores of rupees. And do you think you will give that to other person who is really having the bona fide gift? Never. He rather would it and trains his children to be there because that's a property what he has made by stealing the money of the innocent flock. He doesn't speak in truth. Anything or everything that goes against the mind of Christ is a lie. To tell you an example of this, the offerings which you give to the Lord of God, if they're not according to his will, they are not been accepted. And in this manner, we find many people like Simony coming to buy this bona fide gift by money. Therefore, they join some theological colleges. Don't have the experience of KT theology, the Nitang theology. Don't have the things pertaining to day by day preparation in the isolated place for the Lord. As Christ our Lord our God was been led to the mountains and he came and did the ministry in the public. Looking at the library of those men, we can tell whether they have really been given this bona fide gift or not. But they don't even have libraries in my country, India, rather than keeping some sheer lots of books. The books of the authors of Human Viewpoint who want to supplement them with their sheer lots. But when we go back in the original exegesis, every word has so much of things for us to preach and to teach. And though we teach morning one hour, evening one hour, we cannot complete the Bible from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, more than 40 to 50 years of span of time without wasting us or thinking anything apart from daily teaching the word of the Lord our God. Bible tells for us where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord our God, where the people will perish. The Hebrew school of thoughts for Bible college in that place. If there is no sound Bible college in that place, that place has been called as karam, destruction, it is not worth. Today we find wolves rather than shepherds. The shepherds who don't really love to be shepherds, but rather they want to disguise themselves in the terms of wolves. Where the flock goes, they're not interested. How many of the people are coming to the flock? They're not interested. They're only interested with one thing of you. That's your money. And such is a great state. Present Christendom running around in my country, India, in the state of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Pastors deceiving innocent flock by not carrying the right burden, right burden of daily teaching, daily mentoring, at least morning one hour and evening one hour, that's the minimum time. And happy are you, says the scripture, Assyrias, to those who come day by day, day by day, day by day at the doorposts of the Lord, watching, waiting, seeking Him early, 
But yet, what is happening today in our pulpit? The pastors come with their excuses to tell we haven't been learned. Neither did many men who haven't joined the theological seminaries also didn't learn. By that we mean, Lord of a God is a respecter of persons. No. Is impartial. When you diligently seek like Moses to step in, why the burning bush was not been burned, then he calls you. If you don't take your first step to have a right and true fellowship with my Lord, wherever you are, kneeling down in his presence and asking to the Lord, Father, I want to have a right and true fellowship with thee, then it's the work of Christ our Lord our God, because he is the Lord of He is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings of the heaven and the earth. He shall send you the right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers who shall fill you with knowledge and with understanding, and their lips will be possessed with the knowledge of the word of the Lord of our God, and their shoulders will be burdened to daily teach the word of the Lord of our God, and such men will guide you in the original languages of the scriptures and they shall train you up for a strict battle in this angelic conflict of the incentivized stage of this church age. Our spiritual warfare is what every believer ought to keep in his mind. Therefore we have been told in 1 John 4, 4, greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. We cannot go through the vicarious sufferings of Christ on the cross, neither we can drink his cup. No one is eligible to drink that apart from Christ. The morning in his son. Second Timothy one ten writes the same concept again. The morning in his son. But yet we can take now the ministry what Apostle Paul writes for us in Colossians one twenty four to the church to teach and make every believer perfect and complete daily the agony of our Lord of our God during his prayer kneeling down that the flesh is weak not just taking that cup and drinking and going to the cross but the agony that the prayer he prays for us in John 17 I have manifested thy name to them O Lord and they shall keep thy word and keeping thy word, the first prophecy of his prayer about the church age. Through Apostle Paul he builds. And he writes in Colossians 1.24 for us. The afflictions of Christ which I have to pay through to that body. At least some part of mine. Not the vicarious sufferings. The sufferings of daily exhaustive teaching of the right word of the Lord of our God. Daily exhaustive teaching. <coughs> and that's the process of making manifest phonoroitai of Ephesians 5.13. To make to the believers to understand the act of divine revolution of Apocalypto. And for that reason, to make visible, to make sure, to make public. And that part of afflictions have been given for us to carry it forward. Does not Lord of a God choose him to say it before Ananias as a witness, I have, he's a chosen vessel for me, I, he has to carry many things to all the nations. If Apostle Paul wouldn't have been chosen, we wouldn't have anything else as Gentile believers on this earth. It would have taken a long time for us to enjoy the truth, what we cherish and nourish every day in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It would have taken a long time, but who can be the counsel to the mind of Christ? He knows in his time how to fulfill the things. And in the first century, AD 96 itself, he has ended the scripture by the right words of Apocalypse or Revolution. And that which has been as an act of divine revolution, Apocalypto, we are being called to manifest it, but only through light. And therefore he tells we are the children of light. Therefore he tells to prove and to examine it, prove and to examine what is right, what is correct. What is acceptable, what is well-pleasing, what God wills and what God recognizes. 
And for that reason we have been told in Christ to be understanding. How great is our calling in this church age to be the children and the sons of light. Yet many people are weak, sick until to the point of death because they don't confess their sins. They say, Father, we are 99.99999% pure. And that point zero 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 one percent I'm impure. Can it not be equal to 200%? No. 99.99 till to the point of infinity is not equal to 100, though the mathematical count of this world may tell it's 100. But in the divine wisdom of the Lord our God, he recognizes only 100% purity. And by that we mean every believer's walk, if it is not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. And by that we mean if every believer is not coming to the point of understanding the right calling in the mind of Christ, that how much they are grieving the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How much they are squelching the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How much they are certainly taking the paths of lies rather than truth. The believers are also not innocent because they heap up to themselves itching ears, pastors, because they are not able to endure now sound Bible doctrines as Philippi, uh, 2 Timothy 4.2. People now, they don't want sound Bible doctrine. But their life has been told for us, those who come with Christ in the millennium, those who have been beheaded or martyred for the word of the Lord our God, by that we mean what? Every believer have to grow up. To die, like a, to die like a martyr for Christ because of his word, to honor his name above his word, Psalms 138.2. To honor his word above his name. He himself has honored his word above his name. Then who we are to withhold it back? We who, ha, we, who we are to say, Lord, we shall dethrone you, we shall do this, we shall do that. The thought that you think mentally, because as a man thinks, so he is, as Proverbs 23 6. The thought that you think mentally has already applied to your life. Therefore, Christ our Lord our God makes Paul to write, I can do all things through Christ who gives me this archaeo strength. And furthermore, he writes for us, it is Lord of a God when he rules in you to do his good work. It is he who is going to see, certainly it will be brought to a great completion in Christ. What a privilege it would be for us to realize to those times. When you are realizing that you are the son of light, certainly you will walk in the terms of the son of light. And you will certainly reprove those things that are against the mind of Christ. And the way how Christ our Lord of God says, This is my Father's prayer house, you are meditated enough thieves. With that great anger of burning in you, you will say, His word being shut in our bones as fire. You reprove those works of these false concepts of teaching without having daily mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the pulpits day by day. You reprove every believer to tell, give your number one priority for Christ, repent or perish. Of course, a believer has not been losing his salvation because the word of the Lord of a God is not a man to lie nor change his words like a man. Believe and you shall be saved. The works mentioned in First Corinthians chapter three verses ten through sixteen teaches to us what you lose, but not your salvation. You lose your rewards. The only short span of time to be qualified as a winner believer in Christ, MGJ, when they walk in the process of this true spiritual life. The true spiritual life of the three spiritual adult stages, spiritual self-esteem, then spiritual autonomy, then spiritual maturity, developed by Robert Bancathime. 
how true it is for us to be having a cognizance of self-confidence in the word of the Lord of God. Cognizance of absolute invincibility. Cognizance of absolute independability. And given for us a problem solving device number 6, six through 10. 6. Personal love towards God. 7. Impersonal love towards all mankind. 8. Or 7 and 8. 6 is a, pers is a personal sense of destiny. 8. Is impersonal love towards all mankind. And 9. Sharing the happiness of Christ. Of our Lord of a God. And 10. Absolutely teaching to us. Being occupied with Christ. Occupation with Christ. The ultimate goal for every believer. It is no longer we who live. But Christ who lives in us. It is no longer just what Christ our Lord our God wants to live in us, but we take a step to live with Him in truth and in holiness of the right mentoring ministry of His right righteousness in our lives to be reigned. Do you know what a privilege it is for us to be in these terms in Christ? But what are we doing today? We aren't working the right process. The church is not interested to know the right process. The believers are not inter interested to give number one priority for the mind of Christ in the right terms. A right thing to be done in the right way. The church doesn't work for it. The church doesn't look for it. The church doesn't understand for it. And the one who has that vision by the Lord of a God, who is able to stand in the gap, should certainly pronounce grace so that judgment when it follows like the watchman who blows the trumpet like the way how Lord of a God says through Apostle Paul in the span of three years spent in episodes of Acts chapter 20 who has not sent to declare the entire counsel of the Lord of a God who has not sent to declare the entire will of God the Father who has not sent to declare the entire plan of God the Father who has not sent to declare to them the entire purpose of Lord of a God do you know what a privilege it is to stand in his presence because of the role that we pay to think and to understand the sufferings or the afflictions for Christ for his body at least our part of role that's the right part of role for every bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher in witnessing such truth the right part of the role of every believer in Christ is to become not only just an ambassador to the Lord, but to become a great missionary for Christ. And why we come every day to teach to you in the terms of them? Because the world has been surrounded by cults. The Christendom has been ending up and is already in the terms of apostasy. But yet, Lord our God gives grace for you before judgment to understand how true it would be that when we walk in the fellowship of that great Lord he yet has men as Elijah thinks he was the only one he yet has men like those 7,000 people who haven't knelt their knees towards the idolatrous worships Likewise, in this entire world, to honor his word above his name, yet he rises those faithful men who will love to die beheaded in Christ for a martyrdom for his word. Whether the people recognize or not, as Ezekiel was being told, whether they hear or forbear, your work is to go on to do it. You shall not be rebellious in doing your work. Whether the people come day by day to the church or not, you shall not be rebellious in stopping that work. But you record and keep, as we are doing today, or we are being done by, the led, by, by being led by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to be done day by day. Because what we read today, again tomorrow we come, we get something new. But what we have read today, we cannot let it go so easily without giving the right to reprove in the sight of the Lord of our God to this church. So that they could wake up to their calling in the Lord. 
so that they could understand the true purpose in Christ, so that they could realize what a great privilege it is for us to survive between the two advents of Christ being sandwiched. What a privilege it is for us when we pass down all the examinations of the work in the spiritual adult life, starting with spiritual self-esteem. The first examination, Lord of God provides for you providential preventive suffering. And you enter into the spiritual autonomy, the second stage of your unicarol spiritual life. There you get your testing under the terms of momentum testing under four categories. People testing, thought testing, system testing and disaster testing. People come like Job's wife to say, you have circumstances in your family to look that the people are not supporting you in the calling and the right walking of the Lord, but you have the happiness of God our Lord to share. The joy which Christ our Lord our God gives, the peace which our Lord our God gives, no one can give that. That's what our Master Lord our God is all about. And because of that, in the moment I'm testing, you are not being hindered, whether they come by people or thought or disaster or system, by that we mean the system of your offices where you work. having a certain sect of offices where Christianity should not be spoken about or in all those terms, but yet you have liberty in Christ to stand firm. And what you do? You look to pass down the second examination because you have the sharing of happiness of Christ. And you reach, when you reach the third and ultimate spiritual maturity in Christ, you have already cognitive invincibility in the mind of Christ. And you have already the problem-solving device number 10, which is nothing but share, occupation with Christ. Not sharing. Sharing was in the second stage. But we are in the final stage, the third stage. And there all our God gets to you evidence testing under two categories, which will get only one. That evidence testing towards life or towards the plan of God. If it is towards life like Job, if it is towards like the plan of God, it will be like Christ. And who went along to say, first comes the word, his righteousness in his kingdom. And then follows anything. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. After 40 days of temptation, any man would have been eager enough to eat the bread. But Christ our Lord our God while he was while he was being tempted. Likewise, when we have been faithfully prepared, Lord our God tempts us. And by that we mean being examined in the evidence testing. Are you really being occupied with Christ? Are you yet have gaps which has to be filled? And you have to know that you shall, you shall not be tempted by the Lord. Satan tempts you, but you, when you give an urge for your volition to say yes, sin is taken birth. So we shall be aware about when we are going through the sufferings, not temptation, to be more specific of the word which have passed down in the first stage, providential preventive suffering. From there on, you are being trained very well enough by sharing the happiness of God, but now you have occupation with Christ. What a great privilege it will be for you not to worry about the temptations. In spite of those 40 days, Christ our Lord our God says, man does not live by bread alone. The only reason is he has been proving the steady process what he has learned from his birth. And he's setting a pattern for us in the flesh. And he sets a pattern to such kind of a great extension to tell that they shall do greater works than me by keeping thy word. And by that he means that we have the old sin nature in us constantly like the in the garden of Eden, the tree which has been planted with its fruit. There at least while they have been passing through that road or that path, they would have understood that there is a tree which Lord of God said not to touch it, not to eat it, not to touch. Satan makes Eve to tell that not to touch because... Eve was not concentrative upon the daily word of the Lord of our God, what Christ our Lord of our God was teaching to it. So not to eat was the scene. Whenever they would pass by that way, or whenever they would be under that tree, they would understood it, not to touch, not to eat. But over here when we find the old sin nature is constantly fighting against the Spirit of God which has to control our soul which has to make our new, newly born spirit 
and that newly born spirit or created spirit should be controlled and be occupied by Lord God the Holy Spirit and if there is any minute sin either by thought word or deed Lord God the Holy Spirit did not spare with his father his own fellow member of the Trinity on cross and he said cried with a loud voice Eli Eli lama sabachthani my Lord my Lord why have you forsaken me if we don't come up to that cry today by every breath when we are not walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit then you can never be called as a beloved sons of God you may be called as a great saint or a great Pope you may be recognized by the people who are so foolish who do not know if they would know what is the right word of the Lord of our God, they would, they would certainly make you all not to be what you all are thinking today by following your standards of kleptes, lestes, misthotes, tupas, canapes, tiflos, and shuras oriented works which are going along with the terms of your miracles or healings or tongues. Lord of our God the Father makes you to be having your miracle or healing, not through any mediator so that you can tell, I purchased oil, I purchased kerchief. Long back in the book of Isaiah, we find this man doing the kerchief business like the armholes being packed. But we are not for that in this church age. We are chosen for the battle of Eon, says Ezekiel 26. In that battle of Eon which has been going on, we have been introduced now into this path of this church age. With the greatest weaponry of all time, never even could be imagined by anyone, including the fallen angel known as Lucifer or Satan. Made little lower than the angels, and this man has been equipped with such great weaponry to defend the divine essence of the Lord of a God by having his essence in him by faith alone and Christ alone, and walking to prove and to judge angels as per 1 Corinthians 6 3. Even Lucifer doesn't have enough guts to touch you. Far less you make up your path to such false doctrines and false teachings. Making you to believe that you are not been saved by faith alone. In Christ alone. Making you to believe the Roman Catholic Popery Certificate of Sainthood. Rather than making you to understand that first itself, when you believe in Christ, you are saint to set apart now. You don't have any works or you have you any partaking jobs or joints applying together with darkness. You are no longer now. You have been transformed from that and now you are in Christ. You are in light. Do you know what a great privilege it is for us? Yet many men are sleeping slumbers. Why we choose men? Because men has our family and men should go and teach to their wife and wife should go and teach to their children. Some exceptions when the wife is not mentally mature. Then the role will be taken care of by the husband because of his patience given to him. And many men don't even wake up why that old sin nature has been kept in you to understand the beguiling nature of Satan and not to be deceived like Eve and to understand the stratagems of Satan and to realize and not to be ignorant of his devices but rather realize the step how you have to be led by the Spirit in Christ through his word. Such were the men who have been led by the Spirit to do His work, hired by the servant of the Lord, of, hired by the Spirit of the Lord of God to be His servants in eternity past, before they could be in the womb of their mothers. They don't love to do anything else on this earth apart from pleasing my Lord, that which God recognizes and Lord of God, Lord of God wills. Dear brethren, looking the man-made traditions, rituals, worshipping by lips and not by the heart. In the season of this Lent, 40 days, the people come happily to the church. But once the season is gone, it's gone. 
But every day cherishing and nourishing in the presence of the Lord our God is what Bible teaches to us. Not just this 40 days. The remaining 325 days belong to the Lord our God and not to you. And every day you have to give time for that. Therefore in the book of Psalms we read, Lord teach me how to count my days. Therefore in Ephesians 5 he writes, Redeem the time, exagarazo, because the time is short. And understand what are the demands of the word of the Lord our God and walk wisely, wisely, wisely and not as fools. Because the days are for us. Attribute of Satan, since it has been destroyed, it wants to destroy you. By making you to believe lies, by making you to put up on a mask, as we read in Ezekiel 27 verses 17 and 18. The chariot being absolutely adorned by the royal 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 appearance of their clothes. And that chariot is nothing but destruction, as we are noted in one of our tape. So the world is covering you through the lies of Satan, manifesting themselves to be the angel of light, but not true transformation or the true accurate word to be used, metamorphomai. Not true metamorphomai, but the word metaschematizoa in 2 Corinthians 11. Outward they appear as light, but inward they are still in dark. But Romans 12, 1 and 2 talks about right metamorphomai. And your outward man should prove and work the deeds of Agathosune as we have read. Because your spirit of your newly created one deals with truth. And the soul should be changed now in the terms and the righteousness of divine standards, not the standards of this earth. The trichotomous nature of the human being, what we thought, spirit, soul and body, the fruit of the spirit of light comparing to it, we have understood. The spirit, truth. The soul, righteousness of Yahweh Elohim, and the flesh, what we outwardly appear, is nothing but every good work. Having a zeal for the truth, and having to rebuke them, correct them, and absolutely chastise them. Because Agatha Sune is an everlasting character given for us, being expressed in itself, doing active goodness. And what a privilege it is for us in those terms that we look. And how many people have been there today not able to understand such facts. And by that we mean they don't love my Lord. If they would have loved my Lord, they would have certainly sought about it long back. At least Isa sought. But he was not been given again the birthright. Before it could depart from this earth, how true it would be for us to seek and search of a lot of a God in truth and do the work of Yahweh Elohim only nothing but in truth. Dear brethren, think about these issues. Life is too short. We need to pass down the evidence testing before it could pass out from this earth. Every believer has to face towards life like Job, towards plan of God like Christ our Lord our God. Because in nothing we have been called to be short to be walking like Christ on this earth. We have been given the power to call to, the, to Lord God the Father as our Father praying unto Him. We share His righteousness, we share His destiny, we share each and everything of His eternal life. We are nothing short to be called to be walking like Christ as 1 John 2.6 teaches to us. Because we have the sperm of Lord 1 John 3.9. So we can walk in whichever manner of evidence testing to be more greater, to have a witness like Job when it was been told before the presence of the Lord. And the same thing we read, Noah, Job and Daniel. Because of their righteousness they shall be saved, not their children. So it is in the evidence testing towards life when Christ our Lord our God could tell to Satan, Have you seen my servant Job? 
in the plan of life of Lord of our God, if you have been given this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to daily teach, have you seen my servant walking in the footsteps of Apostle Paul, the way how Apostle Paul tells for them, imitate God the Father in heaven? The rule which has been set, the rule according to the gospel of Apostle Paul when he teaches for us. The rule wherewith you and I have been called in Christ to perform it. So Christ our Lord our God exemplifies for us to learn the lesson to teach. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. Your all sin nature constantly leads you to sin, because when you give evolution for it. But when we are being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, there is no war of the flesh over the spirit, because we walk in the spirit. And when we walk in the spirit, Galatians 5.26 says, we shall certainly march in the spirit only when we live in the spirit. Walking in Galatians 5.16, in 5.25 it says about, when we live in the spirit, then we can certainly make a march. So I can't in the spirit. And what a right privilege it will be for us. When such temptations comes for us in the life of the plan of God, no way to budge our head, no way to budge our neck, to be in the presence of Yahweh Elohim to tell that I have not done my work accurately, O Lord. In Romans 16, when we read, For whose sake I have kept my neck under the axe, greeting all the brethren. And by that we mean the life at risk. Many things what we understand today of the life of Apostle Paul, the great missionary work what he has done, Compared to our work, we are zero. We have liberty according to the Constitution rights. We have liberty to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, long back in Galatians 5.1. We have been much given and much expected from us. Yet we walk in vain and not and never in truth. That's the greatest problem what we are facing today because people don't love the truth. If they are constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, living in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and certainly marching in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, certainly, dear brethren, it would be a great fact for us to understand. In spite of all the temptations which could be bought, knowing the devices of Satan, we would be much greater and much influenced in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to tell, Lord, we cannot open up our mouth. It is you who have to speak. The mud of this man is cannot, because it is having only dust, but thy spirit in the supernatural realm, using us as your instruments, as your vessels, preach thy word as a fire, so that they can understand their calling in Christ to walk as a children of life. Dear yeah, brethren, Ephesians 5.13 goes on to teach, exposing a glanco, reproving correction, so that you can make visible the act of divine revolution given to us, this mystery in Colossians 1.26 very specifically. To the believers, as Christ told Allah, God prayed long back in John 17.6. And we can manifest by making known that object which has been revealed only through the fortiso process of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the light. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. And what do we have? Nothing but the mind of Christ to be exposed in his light. If you love him, keep his commandments. Think about these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. 
In order to believe, you tell to Lord God the Father the privacy of your soul that you believe upon his dear beloved Son. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth falls to very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall not talk by to post know the truth by carrying the cross daily of the Lord's will. And the truth shall set you free. If you are not carrying his cross day by day, daily, then the truth is not found in you. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season, because of the diamond from our witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from our witnesses in dwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond from our witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? No matter however the chips may fall, rightly divide the word of truth. If you live for the truth, since we can do nothing against the truth, let us also die for truth. It is whose it is he and his name that we need to honor. And it is his word that we need to honor above his name. Think about these issues. Three days we had a gap. I had been to out of station and we shall continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with the word. Father, we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit challenges by this message to those who are really interested to walk in thy truth, exposing the deeds of this darkness. Father, give us the strength and courage, the manifestation of the prayer of John 17, 6, so that we can tear our, oh, keep thy word till the last breath of our lives, being faithful witnesses for the truth, as being kings in Christ, writing at least once the entire Bible upon our knees to understand thy calling in the Lord, not to be equally yoked with unbelievers. In Christ, much less pure, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. Amen.